Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Technologues. The topic of lecture is orthogonal frequency division multiplexing abbreviated as OFTM. Before I move on to the actual concept of OFTM, as a background knowledge, I would like to explain the multipath channel and the channel delay spread, which is the channel impulse response and its corresponding frequency response. In wireless communication, multipath is the propagation phenomena that results in radio signals reaching the receiver antenna by two or more paths as shown in the figure. Whereas the major cause of multipath includes deflection and refraction from terrestrial objects such as mountains and buildings. The channel delay spread is the impulse response of wireless channel. A short channel impulse response corresponds to a frequency flat channel, generally in case of a single path channel. Whereas in case of large, impulse response or delay spread, we get a frequency selective channel as illustrated in the figure on the right. Now in coming on to the limitations of a single carrier transmission, in order to support a high data rate, the minimum required bandwidth is the Nyquist bandwidth, which is directly proportional to the symbol rate. It implies that a wider bandwidth is required to support a higher data rate in a single carrier transmission. When the signal bandwidth becomes larger than the coherence bandwidth in a wireless channel, the link suffers from multipath fading, incurring the intersymbol interference. Whereas a bandwidth over which a channel frequency response stays constant or, a, or has a very little variation is called the coherence bandwidth. Intersymbol interference is resulting from the replica of a same symbol coming at the receiver end from a different paths in the multi-channel, multi-path channel. As depicted in the figure. To overcome the frequency selectivity of a wideband channel experienced by a single carrier transmission, multiple subcarriers can be used for higher rate data transmission so that the frequency selective channel can be made frequency flat for individual subcarriers. Now, coming on to the important aspect of OFDM that is orthogonality. As shown in the figure, in time domain signal, let's say the waveform in blue has a frequency of 1 hertz. Similarly, in green color, the waveform has a frequency of 2 hertz and so on. So that these signals have frequency difference of 1 hertz from the neighboring subcarriers. Whereas in the frequency domain, when we look at the sync function spectrum of this time domain signal, that produces the overlapping spectra between the subcarriers. At orthogonal frequencies, the individual peaks of the subcarriers are aligned with the nulls of the other subcarriers. The use of the orthogonal subcarriers allows more subcarriers per bandwidth, resulting in an increase in the spectral efficiency. In a perfect OFTM signal, Orthogonality prevents interference between overlapping subcarriers. Now, coming on to the implementation of OFDM using FFT. OFDM implementation can be done in digital domain by using a combination of fast Fourier transform and inverse fast Fourier transform. In a digitally implemented OFDM systems, the input bits are grouped 
and map to source data symbols that are complex numbers representing the constellation points. These complex source symbols are created by the transmitter as though they are in frequency domain and are the inputs to an IFFT block that transforms the data into the time domain. The time domain signals that results from the IFFT is transmitted across the radio channel. At the receiver, an IFFT and FFT block is used to process the received signal and bring it into the frequency domain, which is used to recover the original data bits. Now, OFDM signal implementation is discussed in detail. To begin the OFDM signal creation process, the input data bit stream is encoded and convolutional coding and interleaving is performed. Each data stream is divided into groups of bits and converted into complex number representing the map constellation points. Then bins of FFT blocks are loaded. The, bin con the bins contain the constellation points which are mapped into frequency indices. When the FFT FFT block is completely loaded, the inverse FFT is computed, giving a set of time domain samples representing the combined OFDM subcarrier waveform. To complete the OFDM symbol, guard interval is then added to the beginning of the OFDM waveform. This produces a single OFDM symbol. The process is repeated to create additional OFDM symbol for the remaining input data bits. To complete the OFDM frame structure, the single OFDM symbols are concatenated together and then appended to a preamble, which is used for synchronization. Now this completes the OFDM frame and is ready to be transmitted as an OFTM burst. Now coming on to the another important aspect of OFDM systems, which is the cyclic prefix. A cyclic prefix is the process of adding guard interval that prevents intersymbol interference when an OFDM signal is transmitted in an dispersive channel. A cyclic prefix is basically an identical copy of a last portion of OFDM symbol appended before the OFDM symbol as shown in the picture. So this preserves the orthogonality of the subcarriers and prevent intersymbol interference between the successive OFDM symbols. To fulfill the condition for intersymbol interference free OFDM transmission, the guard interval should be kept greater than the channel delay spread. Now to highlight the one of the major disadvantage of OFDM, which is the high peak to, av high peak to average power ratio, the OFDM system can have a high peak values in the time domain since many subcarrier components are added via an IFFT operation. The OFDM signal systems are known to have high PAPR, which is peak to average power ratio compared with single carrier systems. The PAPR problem is, an, is important in uplink since the efficiency of power amplifier is critical due to the limited battery power in mobile terminals. So that's all from today's lecture. Thanks for watching the video.